It's clear and it's cold in the city of brotherly love. It's game two of the four game series, the Padres and Phillies. Oh, Philadelphia freedom. I love you. Shine the light. Number two for Will Myers. Off hitter John Jay, a hit in every ball game so far this year. A key RBI double in the 4 3 win yesterday. And Corey Spangenberg, the second baseman, is muscling into Matt Kemp's territory. Eight RBIs in seven games. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to Philadelphia. Mark Rand and Dick Enberg, the Padres with the win today, have a chance to go to 500, 4 and 4, and they can only hope that the bullpen continues to get outs the way they did yesterday. Dick, you and I are big baseball fans, and we both know that the complete game for a starter is pretty much gone by the wayside. So there you go. You hand the ball over to the bullpen. Kudos to Kevin Quackenbush who walked away with the win. This is not a misprint. They handed the ball over to Carlos Villanueva. Only one hit and four innings for the pen. Bagels and the earned runs and walks, and they punched out four. Now, the one thing that sticks out to me, Maurer bounced back after Denver. He handed it over to Rodney. These guys had to go twice through the heart of the lineup, and after they sealed the deal, reach into the quiver. After this pitch, popped you him up right wait. side. Dick, you what is he going to do right here? You can't wait. Here it comes. Get in there. Hit the target. Bullseye for Fernando Rodney. It's all good in Padre. This is a tough game to win on the road in Philadelphia. I don't care how bad or good this Philly team is. This is a tough place to win, and they sealed it yesterday. Well, that bullpen is passing the test since the first game of the season. They have a lot of posting hitters, just a 200 batting average. They may be uh, on call again tonight. Robbie Erlin on the mound to start for the Padres. He, in relief, picked up the win in Colorado. And he'll go against veteran Charlie Morton. First pitch coming up.
Brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. By Petco, your complete pet store. By Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. And by SeaWorld, enter tonight's keyword family on the Ways to Win page at FoxSportsSanDiego.com. And it's time now for a Saquon pick the stiff. Fans, you know how it goes. Decide who you're with by tweeting out hashtag I'm with. And the last name of the broadcaster you think has the best pick tonight. If you're right, you could win a free foursome of golf at the Saquon Golf Resort. Here's how we see it. I'm going with Brett Wallace. Mark Grant, the two-time defending champion, has Spangenberg. Mike Pomerantz with Kent. Sweeney uh, having a good start to the season, 21 points. Likes the leadoff hitter, John Jay. And Julie Alexandria out in the lead with 32 points. Selects catcher Derek Norris. Rained all morning. It finally uh, became a dry afternoon. They say 57 degrees right now, but with the wind gusting 20, 25 miles yeah. an hour, it certainly feels a lot colder. And they say it will be down in the low 40s before the broadcast and this game is over. I'll tell you what, this morning was major speedado alert all over town. First pitch of the game is in there for a strike from Charlie Morton, a 32-year-old veteran. John Jay trying to keep that hitting streak alive with a base knock in all seven games thus far. He's seen more of Morton than anyone in the Padres starting lineup. Another strike call by Angel Hernandez, 0 and 2. Hernandez with Barksdale at first, Little at second, and the umpire at third, Ted Barrett. And a swing and a miss, and on three pitches, Jay is gone. Look at the Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota. Andy Green has the lineup set this way with Jay Spanchen Bergen Kemp. That's been the, the first three all season long. Brett Wallace moves into the cleanup spot. Will Myers getting the night off. Melvin Upton hits fifth. Then Derek Norris, Alexei Ramirez, Alexi Amarista hits eighth, and Robbie Erland ninth. Spangenberg steps in and a swing and a miss. And right hander Charlie Morton on the hill. He was traded to Philadelphia for David Whitehead. That was back in December of last year. Heavy sinker. He throws it a lot. He's got the curveball, the split fastball, and pretty basic. Nothing really sticks out. Tries to pound the zone, get some grounders. He's had good success uh, in the major leagues against Padres hitters, uh, especially at Pittsburgh. Lifetime against San Diego, four and one with a Fine ERA of 270 and batting average of 179. And another swing and a miss, one and two. Does that change up go along with a two seamer? You know, if you're a low ball hitter like Corey Spangenberg and some left handers, uh, some success against that sinker if he gets it up in the zone. Got to make him work up. You hear that all the time with sinker ballers. That's a need the ground ball so far. A couple of quick strikeouts of Jay and Spangenberg. Morton, a big, tall, lanky 6'5 and 220. And the Philadelphia defense behind him. Tyler Goodell, we see him for the first time in left field with Herrera in center and Burgess in right. Franco, Galvis, Hernandez, and Howard around the horn. Veteran Carlos Ruiz behind the plate tonight and Morton on the mound. Matt Kemp. And he hits a one hopper to Galvis from the outfield grass, throws him out. A quick one, two, three inning for Charlie Morton. Cesar Hernandez leads it off for the Phillies.
that the Phillies come up with Cesar Hernandez leading off in the bottom of the first inning. Here is their lineup. Pete McCannon has him hitting in this order. Hernandez followed by Odubel Herrera, then Michael Franco. Ryan Howard, the veteran first baseman at the cleanup spot. Carlos Ruiz, another member of the 2008 World Series champions. He's behind the plate. Freddie Galvis at six. Then Peter Burgess, Tyler Goodell, and Charlie Morton, the pitcher. The lineup brought to you by Hyundai. And the Scott Report for left-hander Robbie Erlin. Last time out in relief, he did a great job. And now he's getting a start here in Philadelphia. Got the curveball and cutter control and aggressive with all of his pitches. Do exactly what he did last time out. He should find himself doing quite well against these Phillies. Let's look for the fastball in on a cold night here in Philadelphia. And the bouncer past the mound, charged by Spangenberg, has to hurry, and he just does get the speedy. Cesar Hernandez for the first out. Boy, they're going after that first yeah. pitch tonight, aren't they? Here's the defense, along with Spangenberg for the Padres, in the outfield, up and in left, Jay in center, Kemp in right. Amarista back for his second start with Ramirez at shortstop. Angenberg, we just saw him make the last play. Brett Wallace at first. Derek Norris behind the plate for the left-hander Robbie Erlin. Odubel Herrera, six for 26 on the new season. The wind is blowing straight in at times and then at this moment angling toward the right field corner. And it is gusty. It's going to be tough to hit it out in left field. And uh, the ball hit in the air down the right field line. You better be ready for some crazy curves in batting practice. Balls that start 20 feet there were being blown all the way into the stands foul. Herrera against Erland. Robbie against uh, Colorado went three and two thirds in relief and allowed only one hit, no runs. 41 pitches in three and two thirds to pick up his first win of the season. Yeah, he was in cruise control. Hopefully he doesn't skip a beat. Good quick first inning for Robbie. Fastball on the inside corner. No, I guess that was an all speed. The radar said 82 miles an hour. Andrew Keshner was breezing along last night, pitching very effectively through the first three innings. And then gave up a run in the fourth and finally uh, the sixth. Left with the bases loaded and Padres got out of that jam. Out of play. You know, in this type of weather, Dick, with a pitcher out there like Robbie Erlin and Charlie Morton, it's uh, sometimes hard to get a grip. You really have to get some moisture on your fingers, maybe going to the rosin bag and going to the mouth quite a bit. It's a bundle up night tonight. No doubt about it. Well, in the early morning rains, there were a few flakes of snow also this morning. One and two. Mm. Just missed. Second of four, Padres and the Phillies. And then San Diego will fly home Thursday night and open a nine game series at Beckville Park next Friday. Arizona in for three, Pittsburgh three, and the Cardinals for a three game weekend series. Here comes a changeup. And he gets him swinging. Two away here in the Phillies half of the first inning. And a look now at the keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Okay, repeat Robbie, repeat relief. We talked about the relief appearance by Robbie Erlin. He did a spectacular job. And last night the bullpen was outstanding. Clean, crisp baseball. No freebies for the fight fills. Hey, kudos to those guys out there. Oh, yeah, they deserve a big heart because they're my guys. And I love the relievers. They're in the penthouse. The two warm up areas, the two bullpens are stacked one atop the other. The Phillies are down the basement. And the Padres <laughs> are up there where the expensive uh, well, clothes uh, and other items uh, you can find. You know why they do that. I mean, the fans are right above the Padres. They heckle them big time. Oh, yeah. And they can do that. Oh, here in yes, the city they can. <laughs> brotherly heckle. You're going to get an earful out there. Michael Franco. He's off to a hot start hitting 409. There they are. They can lean right down and when you're warming up, they're in your ear. I drive the left field, but in the wind, that's going to blow that back toward the infield and in fact to foul territory. Captured by Upton. Oh, it's going to be an adventure. Balls hit in the air tonight. Down to the second.
made manager Andy Green so effective with these guys so early on is his ability to empathize with just how difficult it is for some of the bench players to be effective coming off the bench the last minute, barely any notice. He was telling a story today how he remembers being called up in 2006 and not getting a start until May. So he basically sat on the bench the entire month without getting any opportunity. And he said he doesn't want to do that, especially with these guys. That's why we're seeing it reflected in the lineup today. And he talked to Jabari Blash. He just kind of checked in with him, and this is something he likes to do with all the guys, but specifically with Jabari because he could tell that he really wanted that chance. And he sat down with him, and just to kind of check in, see where his mind was at, he said he wanted him to remain positive. He said, don't worry, your time is coming where you're going to be effective. We're going to call on you more often than not. He's like, but for right now, just be patient. So something we're going to be seeing, especially in this series, a lot of these guys getting a chance. And, of course, Will Myers, Julie, is a... Uh Get, gets his first uh, day off, game off tonight. And uh, manager Green said that it'll be Matt Kemp either tomorrow or Thursday, probably Thursday. He'll want, he wants to give everyone a day off. It's a long season. You don't want to wear out your team in the first month. Brett Wallace leads it off two and one. The count on him here in the second. Whoa, a shot back up the middle, but glove by the second baseman Hernandez and oh. a scoop by Howard at the other end. They steal a base hit away from Brett Wallace. I don't know if uh, Morton got a little piece of it to slow it down coming back through the middle. And uh, Franco was over on the second base side in the shift. The, the unbelievable thing about this play is that Franco's momentum is going towards the left field wall and in the air. Look at how much he gets on it. It doesn't get there on the fly, but credit Ryan Howard also for sucking this one up on the scoop. I tell you what, big out for Charlie Morton and the Phillies. Line drive right to Galvis off the bat of Melvin Upton. So two balls hit hard for outs by the Padres here in a quick second inning. In fact, uh, that first inning required only eight pitches from Charlie Morton. So Franco, the third baseman, with his third baseman's arm able to make that play out of the shift to deny Wallace. And then Upton with a laser right to the glove of Galvis for the second out. They got a pretty good left side of the infield. They do defensively. Yes. And Franco made a couple of good plays yesterday. Mm -hmm. Took an extra base hit or two away. Guarding the line. Now he's over at the hot corner. We talked to Larry Boa before the game. He is the bench coach of Pete McCannon for the Phils. And he likes what he sees. Still a couple of years maybe away to where this team really gels. And they've got some youngsters in the minor leagues also waiting to come up to the big league level. Derek Norris, one and one the count. There's Larry Boa, former skipper, valuable bench coach, fiery character. One of my favorite guys in baseball, Larry Boa. The inside 2 and one Ground chuck, they called Charlie Morton because of all the ground balls he induces. In fact, uh, very few pitchers in the big leagues throw more ground ball outs than Morton. Testimony to that sinker. Yep. Back last year, well, since 2011, he's number two in the big leagues to Dallas Keuchel. 58% of his outs, ground ball outs. Late movement on that sinker is tough to square it up. And you ask any hitting coach, Alan Zinter would say the same thing. Yeah, can make him get it up in the zone. And down low, ball four. The Padres' first base runner, first base runner of the game as Norris trots to first. And that'll bring up Alexei Ramirez. Against the Padres, as we told you, they had trouble getting base hits off this right hander, 179 batting average. And Dick, like any sinker baller, you want to try to get him early. If you can get Charlie Morton on the ropes early, that's good because once he finds that groove, you get that sinker working. Next thing you know, you're getting deep into the ball game. Well, they are two and five on the season. Philadelphia, their starting pitching has been very good. There's a strike. Only Morton had a rough outing in the tour through the top five at Pittsburgh. He lasted only three and two thirds innings, gave up six runs, but the rest of the starts have been very stingy to the opposing hitters as you look at Pete McCannon. Now the full time manager interim last year when he replaced Ryan Sandberg at midseason. Nubbed right to Howard. And that's about as easy as it gets. To the bottom of the second, no score.
All right, thank you, Mike and Mark. And it's Ryan Howard leading off the Philadelphia second inning, no score. And with a, a loss by the Dodgers, they dropped to 500, four and four. So they're one and four in their last five games. Giants atop the NL West with Colorado slipping into the second spot. Padres trying to get to 500 tonight after their 0 3 start. Dodger sweep. Phillies are 2 and 5. Padres 3 and 4. Well, you look at that schedule and out of the division, of course, here in Philadelphia, Pittsburgh at home, the Cardinals, and then back in the division with the Giants and Dodgers. So, hey, challenging schedule for the Padres. High deep drive to right center field. How much will a win impact this? It's going to keep it in the yard. And Kemp makes the play. Off the bat, on a normal night, that would have been big trouble. It kind of had that sound like it was towards the end of the bat just a little bit. And that's all it takes from missing the sweet spot. Yeah, as Old Glory going double duty out there. Heavy starch. Out of the left hander's hand, it looks like maybe an off speed pitch. And Ryan, yeah, Ryan Howard out in front of it just a little bit. That's all it takes to keep it in the yard. Carlos Ruiz, the catcher, three for 11 on the new year. So Howard and Ruiz batting back to back in the order tonight. They're the two remnants of the 2008 World Series championship here in Philadelphia. All the rest of the key players have moved on, and much of that part of the House cleaning in Philadelphia. They've gone to youth, fifth youngest team in the major leagues. Three and O to Ruiz. And after this season, Ruiz and Howard off the books. And as I mentioned earlier, Larry Boas said there's some good youngsters in the minor league, and they got the good mixture up here. A four pitch walk to Ruiz. Philadelphia's first base runner tonight. And that'll bring up the switch hitting shortstop, Aww. Freddie Galvis. Cuteness sighting here in Phil. Oh, how darling. Beautiful <laughs> eyes, huh? <laughs> Cheerleading move with Mama. Galvis has hit from the right side in only one game. He's one for four right handed. Overall, just five hits so far this year. That's a strike. Stands a good distance away from the plate, does Galvis. That means to me, when I look at that, he's going to dive to the outer part of the plate. Open stance. Bounces that breaking ball one and one. I've always been a believer that when they dive like that, of course you want to try to bury that fastball in, and maybe cut it in on the hands. You think, boy, look at how far away he's standing, and you think, well, I can just pepper away at the outside corner, but that's where they want to drive it. Fastball strike at 90. Peter Borges. In the on deck circle for Philadelphia. Curveball. Keeping the ball down nicely. Chopped up the middle. Spangenberg will run the runner back. There's one out. Now the tag play at second. A double play. Well done by Spangenberg. Four, three, six on the double play. And we go to the third in Philly. No score. Heady plays. Vanderberg runs the.
Top of the third here at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Opened the same year as Petco 2004. Amarista Erlen and Jay against Charlie Morton. Amarista very significant role yesterday in the win. Had a big base hit early in the game in the third came around to score. One of the four runs made the big play on the controversial infield fly rule. Tagging the runner at third. We're talking to manager Green about that and that I hadn't recalled that on the infield fly rule that runners advance at their own risk but they there's no force the force is off on all runners so Amarista had to tag the runner coming over from third and it's fortunate that the Padre dugouts on the third base side because Andy Green was shouting tag him tag him tag him he uh, obviously knew the rule and Amarista had first gone over and just tagged the bag and then when the runner came over tagged him and that completed the double play first out on the infield fly. Second on the runner taking the risk of advancing, not realizing the infield fly rule had been called. Breaking ball upstairs, three and one. The Amarista recalled from El Paso. His first start was yesterday. As they await news on Jan Solarte's hamstring pull. Left field, but that's carrying right out to Goodell. One away. So here's the play. Bases loaded, no one out. And the ball hit what appeared to be a simple look at Myers. He doesn't know where the ball is. So Ramirez has to go out into shallow left field. There's the tag of the base, and he just does tag the runner, and that completes the double play. Had Myers caught the ball, had he seen the ball, would have caught it in shallow left field. There still would have been only one out, bases loaded. But right. because he didn't see it, Ramirez didn't catch it, and because the umpire Will Little saw that as an infield fly, which none of the rest of us have, but that's after the fact. Even manager Pete McCannon was arguing that's why he was out there chirping to the umpire because he felt the infield fly rule should not have been called. I mean, that was 25, 30 feet out into left field, shallow left field. But the wind was blowing out yesterday, and what appeared when it off the bat to be a, an easy play. And Erlen takes strike three. And it led to this play, and it features our Ram Trucks Tools of the Trade. We're going to focus on that safety squeeze in the seventh inning. Alexi Amaris to the plate. Now watch, there's a couple of factors. Derek Norris on third base, right? Secondary lead. He's leading off back in the sixth inning. He puts it down. And it's perfect. As soon as that ball was on the ground, he's off. Now they had a chance, maybe, just maybe, to get him at the plate, but it wasn't a force play. It would have had to be a, a great feed on the third base side for the tag. It was perfectly executed. The pitcher Aaron Nola said after the game, he said, I thought about throwing to the plate, but it would have taken a perfect play on my part. I wouldn't have been able to get much on my toss. Mm -hmm. John Jay struck out the first time, one of three punch outs so far for Morton. No hits for the Padres. Ian Corey Seeger. Don't know what Seeger did today in the Dodger opener, but it hit safely in every game. Well, both pitchers working quickly. They do that normally anyway, but in this cold weather, and it's getting colder. Right? That rock and throwing it as soon as they can. Morton doing a good job using both sides of the plate to John Jay. Jay has seen Morton uh, 22 at bats with nine hits, hitting over 400, a couple of doubles, and he's been hit five times facing Morton. That's incredible. He's doing some diving at the plate. Wants to bury that fastball in. Sounds like to me. So in 30 at bats against Morton, he's been plucked five times by Morton. Curveball down and in here. And, bite. and what Jay will do sometimes on that breaking ball low and inside, he won't move his puppies. He'll take right. take one for the team. We saw that against the Padres when he was in a Cardinals uniform. Full count. Line to left field, slicing in a corner, foul ball. And the wind impacted that. Drive to left and 
quieter conditions that ball might have hugged the line into the corner for a double. Padre seeking their first hit off Morton. And Kemp in the hole. There's a base hit the left center field and that one's aimed up the alley. Jay takes his turn on his way to second. Here comes the throw. It's offline and Jay pulls up at second with a double. Eight straight games. The Padre leadoff hitter with a base hit. We saw aggressive base running in Colorado. Look at the high sinker. That's the perfect example of what I'm talking about. High sinker. Get it up in the zone. As soon as he was out of the box, he was thinking too. Because Herrera, Goodell, they're verging, uh, merging towards the left center field gap. Why not be aggressive? It forces a bad throw, and that's exactly what happens. And he's in scoring position. Nicely done. Brings up Corey Spangenberg. He struck out swinging the first time. Chance to pick up his ninth RBI, second on the team to Matt Kemp. Off speed, he's out in front. He struck him out on that curveball last time up. Starting him off. It's a good breaking ball. So the Padres with a runner in scoring position. First time either team has placed a man at second. Oh, he didn't make contact striking out the first time, and he swings and misses at the first two on this at bat. That ball looked like it had a little cut to it, actually. Two outs, Jay at second. Runners in scoring position this year. Padres fifth in the majors, hitting 316. Good sign. Oh. And he looks at strike three. So Spanchenberg. Strikes out, and we go to the bottom of the third. No score. Welcome back. Along with Mark Grant and Julie Alexandria, Dick Kenberg, we're pleased you're with us. We'll be back uh, at it again tomorrow, 4 o'clock, for Padres Live, the pregame show. Colin Ray and Jared Eichhoff will duel in game three. Peter Borges, ground ball right side, backhand Spanchenberg off balance, throw in time for the out. One pitch, one out. 
Nice play, Corey Spangenberg, because we know that Peter Borges can run. He's got some serious speed. So Corey's got to get to that ball and then quickly make the transfer. Backhand. Okay, now you got to square up. Now you got to find your footing. Get Three, something on it now. Four steps in the throw. So Borges out on a gorgeous play. Yeah, little two seamer throw back yeah. by Spangenberg. Tyler Goodell, his first at bat in the series. Just 23, grew up in the Bay Area. His dad, uh, a very successful scientist, a biotech industry pioneer, in fact, was involved in uh, synthesizing insulin. Two and one. So what you're saying is a pretty smart guy. I would think that uh, <laughs> <laughs> like father, like son. Yeah. Line drive. Ramirez right off the top of the dirt there at shortstop. Got a little late break on it. That ball appeared to be knuckling off the bat of Goodell for the second out. I thought Alexi may have lost that ball off the bat. Kind of staggered over there to yeah. make the play, didn't he? Let's go down to Julie Alexandria. Julie. Hey, guys. Well, just an injury update for you on Solarte, a positive one, actually. Andy Green says he's been feeling a lot better. He's back in San Diego getting some physical therapy and, reta and rehab. And they expect him to be a lot better closer um, to his expected um, return date, which is the 15-day DL. So very, very positive uh, stuff out of there because that's great. Well, keep bringing those good news, Julie. That would be terrific if he can make it back in 15 days as the pitcher, Charlie Morton, fouls that away. As that appeared to be a very serious hamstring pull, and uh, those can be nasty in terms of uh, rehabilitation. Yes. Two strikes on Morton, the pitcher. Swing and a miss strike three uh, second strikeout for Erlen. He's gone through nine batters in three innings and we're on to the fourth only one hit in the game. John Jay's double Matt Kemp will lead it off for the Padres in the fourth. Scoreless in Philly. Time to tell you about the uh, MLB Ad Bat app. Follow the Padres baseball live all the time with MLB.com Ad Bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com Ad Bat, the number one Ad Bat app for live <laughs> baseball on your phone. That's a tricky one, Ad Bat app. Huh? It's tough to say, but once you get it, Sweet. you're going to love it. Matt Kim, tops. The fourth inning with Brett Wallace and Melvin Upton to follow against Charlie Morton. 
And a line drive base hit through the right side. That was a big gap over there with the shift on. And Kemp takes advantage. The Padres have the leadoff man on. Tell you what, that was actually beautiful. Matt Kemp going the opposite way. They overloaded on the left side. Student body left, three infielders. But Matt Kemp says, huh, really? I'll just take that sinker the opposite way. And he's telling Ryan Howard all about it. Brett Wallace grounded to short his first time. Actually, was fielded by Michael Franco, the third baseman. And the shift on again. Three on the right side. Wallace had some huge drives in batting practice. He was peppering that facing of the second deck in right field. Ball one. Morton with Pittsburgh last year was nine and nine. 4.81 ERA. And uh, you can see against left handed batters as the last three years they've been hitting 300 or better against his offering and that's why Andy Green loaded up the lineup with lefties. And to me that tells me maybe something about Charlie Morton maybe falling into a pattern and just trying to throw the sinkers down and away to lefties not utilizing pitches in but but early tonight Dick I think we've seen curveballs in we've seen a pitch into lefties maybe he's trying to counter that. Seems like some comfortable at bats for left handed pitchers recently against the righty Charlie Morton. Wallace sitting on a 2 0 pitch. Camp with a leadoff single. Sinker. Late swing. Wallace had such an outstanding year last season as a pinch hitter. Hit 349 coming off the bench with four of his five home runs in a pinch roll capacity. Looking for his first hit of 2016. Ruiz out of the crouch, uh, bluffing the throw to first base. Two and two the count. You know what's amazing about that last pitch? Brett Wallace actually kind of gave up on that pitch. It was a two seamer caught a, a pretty good chunk of the inside part of the plate. Just gives you an idea of the movement of that two-seam fastball that Morton possesses. And that ball was right in the hitting zone, number four. Oh, look out! Fortunately, there are a lot of empty seats in uh, that one. Into that gentleman's grasp after it bounced off one of the blue chairs. <laughs> smells good, huh? <laughs> I really? Oh my God. He's just kissing it. Okay. <laughs> Kiss the horse eye. That's what I said. The inside, hit him. three and two. No? All right. Thought I heard something. Maybe that was the pick. Maybe the ball in the dirt by Ruiz. Oh, three and two. Padres trying to brew up. Some run activity here in the top of the fourth inning. Scoreless in Philadelphia. Try to throw that fastball inside here to Wallace. Swing and a miss with Kemp going, and uh, he's a dead duck now. And although they're having trouble getting the ball to first, he's safe. Oh, how did he get out of that? The great escape for Matt Kemp. He was halfway between first and second. But. Uh, Franco unable to get the ball cleanly out of his glove to make the throw. That should have been ball four as Brett Wallace chased a pitch outside. That's and the difference, as you mentioned, Dick. Dropping the ball right there and scampering back safely. A break for San Diego. Yeah, we got a break yesterday on that infield fly rule, so maybe that's an omen. Melvin Upton lined out to shortstop his first at bat. Inside. You know, we go to Peoria, Arizona for a few weeks and we go to San Diego and we got to break out the sweater and the jacket. Mm -hmm. It's a little uh, wintry. -ish. And if I'm a pitcher, 
I'm pitching right in here, Professor. I'm throwing the two seamer in. I'm getting I'm getting in the I'm getting in the knuckles. So I'm gonna if you hit me in the jacket though, I get first base. Yeah. You kissing the horse eye? No, I'm smelling the horse eye. <laughs> you know, it's a good smell. The leather, it's almost yeah. like new car. <laughs> All right, you just go over in the corner and <laughs> work on your old factories. And we'll go on with the game here. Swing and a miss one and one to Upton. Please, you youngsters at home, uh, don't test that out. Could be dangerous to your health. A ball and a strike. No score in the fourth. Oh, oh. almost threw that one away. Good backhand uh, snag by Ryan Howard. You know, last year for the Phillies, they were ranked 28th in innings pitch for starters, and that's one of the reasons why they acquired Charlie Morton because they know he could chew up some innings. 892 and two-thirds, 28th in Major League Baseball. Not good, not good. That's on the inside corner at 95. Upton disagreed with umpire Hernandez. Hey, dude, I got a foul ball, and it smells great. Smell it again. Come on. Smell yeah. it. He, oh, he wanted to. Yeah, he does. He's hooked. One and two. Morton uh, recovered from serious hip surgery in 2014 to return with the Pirates and go nine and nine last year. And that's a full count, three and two. And he's pitching tonight as a young man and his lady friend, letting everyone know that he's got that precious souvenir. Well, Kemp was going three and two on Wallace, but not this time, and it's ball four. Second walk allowed by Morton that pushes Kemp into scoring position two on with only one out here in the fourth and brings up Derek Norris. Okay second time around now for Derek Norris with that runner in scoring position and a runner on first. It'd be nice to get on the board here. It's Charlie Morton. Norris had a key wrong field double proved to be the winning run. Yesterday in the seventh inning didn't hit it hard but directed it right over the first base bag and it trickled down into the right field corner for a two base hit. And eventually scored on the squeeze bunt. By Amarista. Inside. Seeking his first RBI of the season. This would be a nice spot. Breaking ball in there. Right in the heart of the play. Yeah, you know, it seems to me, Dick, early on here in this game that uh, just when the Padre hitters are guessing for the two seamer, they're getting the yacker. When they, they're expecting the yacker, they, he sneaks that two seamer by him, like Corey Spangen did, right? That two seamer right down the middle. Does that look like a pretty, uh, pretty good breaking ball to hit? This one spins outside and low. So the action pitch, two balls and a strike to Derek Norris. Camp leads away from second, Upton at first. Too much time, Norris will back out. Alexei Ramirez on deck. Matt Kemp checking the outfielders. Late swing on the 94 mile an hour fastball. Very late. So two and two. Five strikeouts, two walks from Morton.
Ground ball should be two. There's one. Back to first. Double play. Oh, he dropped the ball, Howard. And uh, safe at first base is Norris and Kemp now at third. Oh, that was made to order double play. Room service at uh, shortstop Galvis. And Hernandez throw over to Howard. Got away. Right there. Ryan Howard just boxed it. Looked like he took his eye off the ball. So an error on Howard. Nora safe. And let's see if the Padres can take advantage of the miscue by Howard. Instead of the inning over, first and third, two outs. Ramirez grounded out the first little number the first time. Takes inside ball one. Morton. 94 95. Oh, yeah, he can get up to 96. He yeah, averages about 92 93, but he's throwing some uh, some good fuzz up there tonight with the, the, the uh, two seamer. Over but low. Twenty second pitch of the inning coming up. From Morton, who needed only 38 to get through the first three innings. Up the middle, and on a broken bat, the throw to first is in time. Now the Padres get a hit, a walk, and an error, can't come up with a run. Moments in MLB history brought to you by Geico 1964 the Phillies Jim Bunning father of nine through the ninth perfect game in Major League history Bunning's perfecto on Father's Day against the Mets at Shea Stadium with his family in attendance Bunning retired 27 straight Mets it was the first perfect game during Major League Baseball's regular season in 42 years Bunning number 14 a Hall of Famer and Served our country for many terms as a U.S. congressman from Kentucky. Reason why we said there was that many years in the regular season for Perfecto. Remember Don Larson in the World Series yep. tossing the perfect game. San Diego's Don Larson. Point Lomas Don Larson. Robbie Erland has allowed only one base runner, but he was erased. Carlos Ruiz on a double play, so facing the minimum number through three innings. Here's Cesar Hernandez. Hernandez from the left side hitting. Had a good clip, nine for 19, but right handed only four at bat, so for four. And on the grass, Amarista in between hot bobbles and still gets him. That's a tough little play. He had to charge and pick up that short hop 
And then the juggled and makes a nice second effort. Whoa, there it is. For the uh, plenty of time. No need to panic there. It's the third start for Erlin against the Phillies, and he's performed uh, well tonight as he did in the past. Boy, the walks and strikeouts is uh, really something that jumps out in you there. You know, his career numbers versus Philadelphia. Both those starts at Petco Park. Odubel Herrera takes strike one. Herrera with a couple of hits yesterday, two singles and four at bats, knocked in a run. He uses the whole field. One line drive to left, one line drive single yesterday to right. Struck out swinging tonight, first time. Nice job by Robbie Earl in the first pitch strike category, eight of 11. He looks smooth, he looks confident. Carrying over from his relief appearance against the Rockies. Outside, two and one. Pretty good pitch right there. Got squeezed. That is the pitch that doesn't get called that off. The low pitch. And it tracks hazard as a strike. Brought to you by Southland Technology. Three balls and a strike. Well, the plate umpire levels his eyes at the top of the strike zone. So if anything above the eyes, it's going to call a ball. It's tougher to see that pitch down at the knees. And it's tough for the catcher to make that catch and keep the ball, you know, frame it up into the strike zone. And there's a tendency to drop your glove and make it look as if it's even lower than uh, when it crossed the plate. Full count. Fastball away. Too far outside. That's the second walk from Merlin. And brings up Michael Franco. Who fouled out to the left fielder, Melvin Upton, his first time. Well, we know that Michael Franco loves the first pitch fastball as Darren Balsley looks out, the pitching coach for the Padres. So I'm guessing maybe a an off speed pitch here. Maybe get something to roll over early to possibly get a grounder and get a double play. Three hits and four at bats last night or yesterday for Franco. There it is. Off speed and he was ready to pull the trigger on a fastball, wasn't it? Way out in yep. front. Good yacker from Robbie Yerlin to get ahead. Infield set for two. Throw him a change up right here. Screw him right into the ground. He's geared for the old number one. Fastball in, fastball away, curveball, change up, fastball away. Fastball in. That's where he started the yeah. sequence of last get, time. Get it in there. Way upstairs. That's the pitch where if you're going to go in, miss in. Don't miss over the heart of the plate. Pitching coach Balsley huddled there in the dugout. Curveball. Focused on his man on the mound. Ground ball to short. Not hit very hard. They get one there. The relay expansion for a double play. 6 4 3. The Padres turn two for the second time tonight. We've gone through four. No score.
Well, I hope it's nice and cozy there in your studios, Mike and Mark. They live yeah. life. We could use a little fireplace, you know, a little crackling fireplace here. As a ground ball pulled to the right side off the bat of Amarista, and there's one quick out here in the top of the fifth inning. Only two hits in the game thus far in this pitcher's duel, and uh, the Padres have both of those uh, hits. Uh, double by John Jay and a single by Matt Kim. Robbie Erland has really taken uh, advantage of an opportunity. And it just goes to show you in this game of baseball when you're called upon. And remember the, the game in El Paso where he didn't do that well, sent to the minor leagues. You got to keep the positive attitude. He got the, the rock in Colorado. I mean, in, in that venue, it's tough to pitch. But he answered the bell and he gets a start here. And, uh, you know, Tyson Ross, we wish him well getting the shoulder back in throwing shape. But Robbie has really done a nice job. Mm -hmm. Four innings. He's been very economical. 40 pitches. Mm -hmm. First pitch strikes, nine yeah. of 12 in that category. Now at the plate, and he takes ball one, one and one. The lefty batting from the right side, protecting that elbow with that pad. Over three on the season with a bat, and he rolls that one foul. Randy Johnson, the big unit left handed thrower, right handed hitter. Most uh, organizations discourage that as young kids come in. They want to keep that throwing arm away from the pitcher. And another strikeout. Charlie Morton, he's had a half a dozen punch outs. So, top of the order, John Jay, a strikeout and a double. I'll tell you what, this Charlie Morton is not from the island of misfit toys. This guy's got some good stuff working. Both pitchers tonight. Salty. Yeah. Nobody wants a Charlie in the box. John Jay doubled the left center the last time. Extending his hitting streak through all eight games of the season. And looks at one inside at 90. Now you put into perspective the hitting streak for John Jay. And then you think of Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak. It is just unbelievable. It really is. I don't think that record will ever be broken. But then again, I thought Don Drysdale's record would not be broken, and Earl Hershiser broke that in 1988. How about Lou Gehrig's endurance record, the Iron Horse? Oh, that's right. I never thought that would be broken. Cal Ripken answered that bell. Never say never. Old foul. Well, the one that I would bet everything I have, all twenty-five dollars and seventy-five cents. Cy Young's win total, five hundred and eleven. Oh, Denton, oh Denton, Cy, yeah. 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 And you had when you bet all that money, you still got your hand on that uh, twenty-five cents, yeah. so it doesn't get away from you, right? Yeah. It's in your pocket <laughs> right there. Another foul, one and two. We got ourselves a pitcher's duel going tonight. We do. Well, ideal conditions. Uh, to be pitching, you stay warm because you're so active on the mound, and those hitters coming up there with uh, cold hands. Somebody gets one in the air toward right field that yeah. should carry. Bounces in, two and two. Mel Morton pitching uh, as he has in the past against the Padres, as we told you earlier, four and one lifetime against San Diego with a 179 batting average against. Just two hits tonight, six strikeouts. Ground ball right side. Filling the hole is Hernandez. And it's a one, two, three inning. Halfway mark. They're all ready. No score.
Time for our Harris game summary. The emphasis on defense tonight and strikeouts. Great pitching. Charlie Morton and Robbie Erland matching pitches and then some outstanding defensive plays. Spangenberg there. Nice play by Michael Franco. And then the heady play by Spangenberg. Run the man back, get the out at first, and now Wallace with a perfect throw back to Ramirez for an unusual 4 3 6 double play. Our Harris game summary. I'd like to be able to show you some runs with Max Michelin down there and Michael Odino. I don't know. They're searching for some. They say they're coming later. As I mentioned earlier, we got ourselves a pitcher's duel. Both pitchers throwing the ball extremely well, hitting the corners, changing speeds nicely. Two base runners from Robbie Earl and both walks, both immediately erased on double play. So he's faced the minimum number of batters, 12 through four innings. I think an advantage for Robbie Earl, and you know, he's a high three quarter release point, but he goes from the first base side of that pitching rubber. So, for instance, Ryan Howard, he's coming up that front right hip pocket. So, getting that angle down and away right here with the fastball. Nice. Change up, two and two. Oh, the combo. Uh, but the bases loaded yesterday and no one out in the sixth inning. Manager Pete McCannon pinch hit for Howard. Brought up Darren Ruff. It was Ruff's line ball into shallow left that would be the controversial infield fly roll call. But uh, that's a sign of what is going to happen. Howard and the uh, twilight of his great career is going to be pinch hit for in certain situations with a left hander on the mound. They'll go to rough to bat. And the, the numbers don't lie. Last year, only a 119 average versus breaking balls. Foul ball just missed the bag at first. Club by Wallace, and he'll send that into the crowd for a souvenir. Howard Ruiz and Galvis, the middle three in the order for Philadelphia here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Arizona coming to Petco on Friday night. They beat the Dodgers in the Dodgers home opener today, four to two. Ground ball, same spot. You know, I gotta say, probably the worst looking costumes I've ever seen in are the ones sport. that the Diamondbacks wore today. Unbelievable. I who the fashion designer was for that. I don't know, but uh, it looks like somebody threw the dark clothes in with the white clothes and they just didn't turn out well. Then they try to spice it up with a little teal borders. Pulled into the right field corner, but that'll be foul. Ooh, he's got his hands on it, yeah. and that's what usually happens. You knock it down, and somebody else picks it up under a chair. He caught it with his wrist. <laughs> oh, you think this game is easy, huh, there, Cha Cha? Don't yeah. Don't smell your wrist. Right. Oh, how nice. You gave it to him. Nicely done. That's a nice gesture by that gentleman. It is, yeah. Again, the 3 2. Swing and a miss. Blew the fastball by Howard. Strikeout number three. That's going up the ladder. Let's check it out of the hand of Robbie Erlen. Well, two seamer high up, and Ryan Howard cannot catch up to it. Way behind. So, Erlen, who needed only 40 pitches to get. 12 outs, 40 pitches in four innings. That was a 10 pitch at bat to Howard. Slow curveball bends in there at 70. Carlos Ruiz walked the first time. Slow roller right at Spangenberg. Two away. You go, Robbie Erlen. Rock on with your bad self. He's making some good pitches. When did bad become good in the lexicon, our lexicon? Huh? I would say in the 60s. It's like when did hot become cool and they both mean the same thing. He's hot, yeah, and now he's cool. It's unbelievable. Yes, it is. is. It's confusing. It is confusing. You know, you live long enough and <laughs> everything means the same. <laughs> it's the Galvis, he bounced into a double play the first time. And there's a looper into right center field, the first hit of the night for Philadelphia. 
Erlen had gone four and two thirds and Galvis just reaches out and punches that single to right center. Well he'll give him the single. That was a ball that just leaked up and away to Galvis and that's probably one of the easiest pitches to hit for a single. Robbie's been working up by design. He's been working in by design. That was a change up just left over the heart of the plate a little bit too much. But with two outs. Hopefully he can get a quick out here to get out of the inning. Threat to Steele Galvis. Peter Borges is the batter. Good play made by Spangenberg to throw him out. In the third inning that was a play where Spangenberg had to range far to his right backhand and then make the jump throw over to first in time. No score. First single first base hit for the Phillies here in the fifth with two gone. Two right. See that wind whipping up and here from the field mics and also Robbie Owens jersey. Yeah, that's a good 20 mile an hour wind and I think it's gusting up 25 28. Out of the north. Breaking ball doesn't quite snap down into the zone. Better make sure you have that nice grip on that curveball because if you don't you can leave it up and that can spell trouble. Change up grip from Robbie Erlin. He will adjust accordingly in his glove. You know, on a cold night, what would be better than something spicy hot like a Cholula, huh? Good call. How about professor? a flamethrower? You ask and you shall receive. Good. Cholula flamethrower for Robbie Erlin. Hey, 91. Not a lot of spice, but good tasting. You don't want to overpower sometimes right. just enough. Yeah. That should be a little. Bring out the full taste of a meal. A ball, two strikes. Gorgeous. Galvis a safe lead, respecting Erlen's pickoff move, the left hander. Curveball. Pull it. Throw it. Be aggressive with it. Get it down. Runner goes. And a foul ball off to the left. You uh, at our hotel, they present the USA Today newspaper in the morning, and on your floor there's a little tape up there by the elevators. And uh, right. I hope you got yours because it was a terrific article in the sports uh, section on Vin Scully. Oh, Bob Nightingale that? wrote a wonderful. Oh, Bob's story. a great writer. Yeah. Runner goes again, strike three, swinging, and that's it for the Phils in the fifth inning. Fourth strikeout for Robbie Erlin, pitching a beauty. No score in Philadelphia. We have only three hits in the ball game. As we head to the top of the sixth, no score, and I'm here with Corey Spangenberg's parents, Lynn and sister Heather, 
and his mom Lynn and his dad Ken. Nice to see you guys. So what is it like to be able to see Corey play here so close to home? You guys are from Scranton, Pennsylvania. We are. It's really nice to be able to see him. It's wonderful that friends and family can be here and we know they are. We really appreciate everyone coming to see him. It really means a lot. I heard that it's not a strange sight to see a lot of kids running around Scranton, Pennsylvania with Spangenberg jerseys. No, there's a few now. It's, it's, it's funny to watch them run around. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. Now, Heather, I know that you've got three brothers, Corey being one of them, and he said that you guys are very competitive. He said that you're all you guys are athletes. How competitive is your household? Um, it's like one big wrestling match when we're all home. It gets pretty intense. Is there ever a fight at the dinner table? For the mashed potatoes? Uh, Always. Potatoes. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much, guys. We appreciate you being here and talking to us. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Julia. Well, unfortunately, uh, Corey unable to produce a base hit while mom and dad and sister were watching and talking with our Julie Alexandria. Bounces out on a 3 1 put out for the first out of the sixth inning of the scoreless tie. Matt Kemp has one of the two Padre hits, a single to right field the last time. The other hit a double John Jay and the only hit allowed by Robbie Erlin in the last inning a single shortstop Freddie Galvis shift is on Kemp beat the shift by hitting it right in that uh, vacant area on the right side ah. right there. Yeah. Morton still with a good lively fastball on this cold night. 75 pitches. Only 58 for Erlen to get through five innings. Padres had a couple of chances to get on the board, a two-out double by Jay, but Spanchenberg struck out, and then they had a little help from Philadelphia, a walk and an error by Howard and a single in the fourth inning. First and third with a fourth out. But Ramirez grounded to short in the inning. Two and one. Brett Wallace next. Will Myers uh, not in the starting lineup for the first time. Swing and a miss. Looks like a good changeup out of the hand of Charlie Morton. Tremendous movement as well. Change up again. Fastball in. Fouled at the plate. Landy Green feeling uh, with uh, Will Myers setting this one out as a starter. And as we said earlier, they'll give Matt Kemp uh, a day's rest as well, probably on the day game on Thursday. And it's such a long season that sometimes you feel, well, you know, it's only April. You can play all your regulars right. every game, every game, every game. He says, no, no, I think it all takes a toll. And I want to. Keep them fresh. I like it. I tell you what, the more and more I talk and get to know Andy Green, the more and more I like. Ground ball right into the shift. And Galvis from shortstop throws him out. And a reminder that our game is presented in HD by Sony. Brad Wallace has grounded to short. The play made by the third baseman Franco in the shift, and he struck out on a 3 2 pitch the last time. Brett Wallace electing to go sleeveless in Philadelphia tonight. Some guys just don't like the feel of the, uh, the long sleeves on their arms all the way down to the wrist. They want to be free and easy. Feel it's a little restricting, maybe. Plus, you get a chance to show off the guns. Those uh, forearms, you bet. Franco moves from third over to the second base position with the second baseman Hernandez out on the outfield grass. Only Galvis on the left side. Power is that when we upstairs to the left. Cold as there's a shift. I'm going to take away the pulling tendency of uh, Wallace. Off the fist easy roller to Howard and another one two three inning middle of the sixth still a scoreless time.
All right, thank you, Michael. Yeah, I'm sure they're having a great time there. As we are here in Philadelphia, a terrific pitchers duel. Robbie Erlin against Charlie Morton as Erlin goes to work. Bottom of the six, Tyler Goodell. And a little low, ball one. Goodell, pitcher spot Morton. And then Cesar Hernandez, the leadoff hitter for the Phillies here in the sixth. Goodell lined a shortstop his first time. And he pulls that one into the hole and through. Second hit for Philadelphia. A leadoff man is on for the first time for the Phillies. His first hit of the season. Goodell. When you're down to the zone as a pitcher, yeah, you're going to give up some singles. That one hits right out in front of home plate, but just out of the reach of Alexei Ramirez. And with Charlie Morton coming to the plate, a couple of factors here. Is he going to put the bunt down to get him over? Is he going to do the old butcher boy? That's Goodell's first major league hit, so they'll collect that baseball for the memorabilia. And it'll be a treasured uh, reminder that his first hit came on a cold night in Philadelphia in April. Morton squares, jabs at that one foul. Boy, Alexi Marista anticipating that bunt. He was nearly down the throat of Charlie Morton coming in aggressively towards the plate. You get a hard bunt, you can go the short way or the long way, I should say, to get that lead runner at second base. Throw to second base, but a bad throw. Oh. And they're going to call it a foul ball. Ball Take. in the dirt there for a moment. I thought uh, he had missed it completely, and Norris uh, alertly firing through to second base. Derek Norris was all over it. I mean, he was quickly out of the crouch. I wonder why that was a foul ball. Didn't look like it came up and hit Morton again. Ball was right there at the front edge of the plate. The, fair, the plate's in fair territory. Yeah, maybe uh, Angel Hernandez thought that that ball was um, behind home plate. Just a thought, but I, I'm right there with you, Dick. That looked like uh, could have been a fair ball. Outside, one and two. Checking down to third at one. Samuel, the third base coach, to see if they're going to wipe off the bunt, let him swing away. He could still play mm -hmm. Samuel. Shook off the change up. Here comes the old deuce. Oh. All the way to the screen. Goodness gracious. <sighs> Better hurry, Derek. And rounding and holding is Goodell at second. So the Padres sacrifice the runner to second on the wild pitch. This one bounces well in front of home plate. So much that it goes over the right shoulder of Derek Norris. Now the Phillies have a chance to bunt them over to third base. So with a man on first he was trying to bunt toward first now with a man on second he'll try to force Amarista to field the bunt. Well maybe swinging no he's going to bunt and take strike three. Well he got the job done just by standing in the batter's box missing a couple of bunt tries but the wild pitch does the job for. Philadelphia. Change up around the outside corner. Cesar Hernandez has grounded out twice. Each team with two hits, no score. Bottom of the sixth. You see the win just. Roll that on a high arc way back in foul territory. And Matt Kemp in right field and uh, the right fielder purchase of Philadelphia need to be aware that anything hit straight away is going to carry quickly toward the line. Two. Amarista now can back up at third. He was playing just off the grass in respect to Hernandez bunting ability. Shallow and right center Jay. Oh. 
inside. One out. Bills have a man in scoring position for the first time tonight. In the dirt. Seventy pitches for Robbie Erlin. Been very efficient. A couple of walks and a couple of singles. That's all. Step off. Got to get on the same page right there as Derek Norris. He was going about three or four signs and just to regather yourself, step off, start from uh, page one again. Breaking hey. ball fouled away. Hey, heads up on the left side of the infield with that breaking ball because, you know, speed up the bat of that right handed hitter. So Alexei Ramirez right here and Alexei Amarista got to be heads up. And that's why the infield is shifted that way. Corey Spangenberg sneaking a little bit over towards second base as well. And Brett Wallace way off the line. Full count now to Cesar Hernandez. The double Herrera on deck and then uh, Michael Franco. OK with the runner at second a series of signs. So maybe the first sign maybe first sign after two. I'm guessing change up. Swing and a miss. Yes. You're guessing right. Six strikeouts for Erlin. Two that, away. That is a huge pitch from the left hander, Robbie Erlin. Sure, first base is open, but that could potentially be another run for the fighting Phils. He fights them off with the combio. I heart combio. Big strikeout. Now it shifts to Odubel Herrera, who struck out swinging and walked the last time. He's the hot hitter. One home run, four runs batted in. Look at that wide stance. Look at that front foot. Spike showing. And then he steps back toward the plate as the pitch is made. You know, you make a good point that front foot, maybe that forces him to stay back because when your foot's like that, you can't put a lot of pressure on it. So all your weight's on your back foot. Maybe forces him to stay back on that. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own little idiosyncrasies to keep them back and not drift forward. Uh, Wait on his. Now he's put on the front. Now at the back. Oh, looks it actually looks like he's putting a lot of weight on that front side. Interesting. Late swing, one and one. Robbie's just uh, 25 years of age. His high school education there in the beautiful Carmel area. Scotts Valley. We upstairs, two and one. You'd like to get Herrera here because Franco on deck has a six game hitting streak and is batting over 400. Right field, and that wind's going to take it into the corner. Goodell will score. Racing around second is Herrera. And he's going to make it to third easily. A triple for Herrera, and the Phils break the scoreless tie. It's amazing with the pitcher's duel late in the ball game, it could be one pitch that just catches too much of the plate. That was a great shot. Overhead shot of that breaking ball. He caught it out in front, but it was right down the heart of the plate. Off speed pitch as well. So he pulls it, keeps it fair. 
And with that speed, easily cruises in to third base with an RBI triple. And that ball started on the line. Normal conditions might have been in the range for Matt Kemp to make a catch, but the wind spanking that right into the corner for an easy triple. So now the key is to keep it at one nothing. But Franco, 0 for two tonight, a tough out. Berlin now going to work from the full windup. Breaking ball in there. One down the line, Wynn is pushing it, then it's foul. Ooh. That was going to be a double without the heavy winds blowing right toward that corner. Look at how that ball tails off to the right. So two strikes on Franco as he returns to the plate. That's when he likes to get extended. That was apparent that last pitch. Ooh, Robbie Erlin trying to bury something inside right here. Twenty-second pitch of this inning, and he gets him with that inside fastball and Thank a you. generous call by Angel Hernandez. Disbelief from Michael Franco, but the inning is over. The Phils get a run on a single and a triple. Herrera knocking in the first run of the game. And Erlin has his seventh strikeout. He winds up striking out the side, but the Phillies have a run. Welcome back, top of the seventh. The Phillies leading one nothing. It'll be Melvin Upton, Derek Norris, Alexei Ramirez for the Padres against Charlie Morton. 85th pitch of the night coming up from Morton. He's allowed only two hits, two walks. And there's a third hit as a line shot to the opposite field for Melvin Upton. He lined out his first time and walked. And the leadoff man on. Padres try to get that tying run around. That was a beautiful swing, not overpowering the swing at all. Let the shillelagh do the work. Dropping the head, at the center of the plate. Oh, that's a good sound. Derek Norris has walked and was safe on the air by Ryan Howard when he dropped what should have been a double play conversion. Big hole on the right side with Howard anchored at the bag. Upton, a good base dealer, always has been. Definite threat. Norris, not a bad hit and run man. See if anything's in the works here. 
Well, you know what? You, that, that, that's a good point because you got a sinker ball pitcher. He's a strike thrower. There's a good chance for putting that runner in motion to stay out of the double play. Slow breaking ball drops in. Left hander Stumpf and right hander Neris in the bullpen. Looking pitch. Absolutely. Did you see Ruiz kind of took that one out of the zone? That was a darn good curveball. I'll bet you that was a strike. But uh, Ruiz kind of took that one out of the zone as he caught that ball. Look at the pitch number two. Well, Derek Norris got a call there. Mm -hmm. And now a high strike. And it was, according to our Nissan Fox track, in the strike zone. Each team with three hits. Bill is getting a single and a triple in the bottom of the six for the only run. Inside, two and two. Norris has walked. And as we mentioned, safe on the air. Ball dropped by Howard on the double play possibility. Second baseman Hernandez swung over in double play position. You see the big bull on the right side if Norris wants to aim one in that direction. Sinker in. And he got him. Another strikeout, number seven for Charlie Morton. Alexei Ramirez has grounded out twice. Well, if you get that call inside, you go back inside, and it's a great two-seam action. And where does it end up? Yeah, that ties up Derek Norris nicely. That's a chalk ball on the inside part of the plate, off the plate, for the strikeout. Ball off the plate. Brian Booker getting ready for the Padres, the lefty. Erlin is scheduled to hit three men away. Good take, 2 0. Oh. Up then there at first base, you talk about his uh, stealing potential. He had some big years in his prime in Tampa Bay 44 42 42 36 steals in four consecutive years from 2008 to 2011. He's got a bigger lead stays the ball grounded foul past third. That didn't sound good. I think Ramirez is going to need a new bat. 274 career steals for Melvin Jr. Kind of surprised that he hasn't attempted to try to steal second base. You know, I'm, I'm guessing that if you've got some speed, that if you get a jump in a certain situation, go ahead and try to take it. Especially with a strike thrower like Charlie Mount, uh, Morton on the mound. Derek Brock, the first base coach, uh, reminding him perhaps he's waiting. A, we'll try to steal with two outs. Mm -hmm. By staying at first base, he opens up that hole on the right side. See if Ramirez can keep it going here in the seventh. Well, Morton's thinking maybe quick throw to first. One nothing Phillies here in the top of the seventh inning. 
Change up. Split. Runner goes. The throw to second base is in time. Carlos Ruiz, a veteran, a quick release, and he erases Melvin Upton for the second out. It was on an off speed pitch as well. Kind of an abbreviated slide step. There's the off speed pitch right from the ear. Fires a strike, and it's perfectly located. Yeah, he's a good one. This ball right out in front of the bag. And where did that one miss? And a full count now to Ramirez. 95 pitches now for Morton. And he's worked another beauty against the Padres, true to form. Ball four. Well, a two out walk Ramirez will bring up Alexi Amarista. Well, we have a minute. Hey, Saturday, I want to tune in. UFC Fight Night returns to Fox as two of the UFC's top light heavyweights collide. Glover Teixeira squares off against former world champion Rashad Evans, plus Yoro Machida takes on Dan Henderson. It all starts at 3 p.m. Pacific on local Fox affiliate or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Amarista has lined to left and grounded to second. Ruiz out to chat with his pitcher here as uh, the pitch count approaching 100 for the right hander. Scattered three base hits, a couple of singles and a double. He's walked three. I think that's the first time tonight that Ruiz has paid a visit to Morton. He just takes a little walk out behind the mound to gather himself. He's been in control tonight. As Robbie Erlin has been in control. It's just that one pitch down the right field line that scored a run. Both pitchers have been on tonight. Replacing Ron Hirvis at third base, came up to start yesterday and first at bat, singled and scored. And also executed that perfect safety squeeze, winning run. 2 0. Oh. Both pitches well outside. I love that shot the overhead shot there gives you a great angle and where the ball clock crosses the plate outside again three and oh kind of laboring a little bit hey he's been wild out of the zone the last couple pitches maybe he'll miss in the zone and that's could spell trouble as Will Myers waits on deck Myers would hit for pitcher Erlin if Amarista can get aboard Walker a hit And another pitch outside all four look at the trip box track Nissan all four pitches wide and on a couple of walks the Padres have the tying and go ahead scores aboard and we check on our fan Diego fan of the game. Oh there's a Robbie Erlin fan number 41 go Rob. Sporting the S-Day here in Philadelphia I see a lot of them here at Citizens Bank Park. Welcome to Philly. Go Pods. Both pitchers are going to leave the game at this moment. Pete McCann is going to replace the man on the mound, Charlie Morton. And Eddie Green is going to replace Erlin with pinch hitter Will Myers.
The Padres a couple of men aboard on walks with two outs and Will Myers will pinch it and we have a new hurler on the mound for Philadelphia Hector Neris in this pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford. Well, Hector Neris, a three pitch pitcher. He's got a split finger fastball to go along with the regular fastball and a slider. He's kind of a uh, top and out at a, a mid 90s type guy. And this season in the four games, pretty good numbers, no runs allowed. And the splits look really, really good. Four and a third innings, he's allowed only one hit, striking out five. A homegrown Phil. Spent a little time last year, 32 games with these Phillies, and also in 2014, so trying to make his mark in the bullpen, inheriting two runners. 26 year old from the Dominican Republic. Here's Myers. He homered yesterday, his second of the season, second of the road trip. And takes ball one. Key blow yesterday took the score from 2 0 to 3 0, got a hanger, and knocked it into the left center field bleachers. Two and oh. Oh, this is good. Work the count. Try to use the big part of the field. Don't get pull happy in this situation. You get a little froggy. You try to pull the baseball. You top it. The Phillies get a grounder. And if you can think center field and right center field, that would be huge. After Upton singled, thrown out trying to steal. Two out walks to Ramirez and Amarista. Enter Hector Neris, and he throws a high strike. Two and one. So Fernandez has been consistent. He's been calling that high strike, but not the low strike. Yep. With two outs, runners ready to go. Foul back. Oh, oh, oh. He had a fat one, didn't he? I look at Will, he's shaking his head. That one kind of leaked up and in a little bit. It's a little different role for Will Myers. He's not accustomed to sitting on the bench for a couple hours in a cold night and then jumping up and pinch hitting. Two and two. A lot of pitches have been up. And he struck him out. So there haven't been many opportunities for the Padres. Another goes by the board. Stretch half of the seventh in Philadelphia. And the home team leads it one to nothing.
Padres Baseball brought to you by Sequan Casino. Sign up for the new Padres Club card today. By Jack in the Box. Taste the bacon licious sourdough bacon ranch combo. And by Mercury Insurance, who are on a mission to save you money. Log on to MercuryInsurance.com today. Ryan Booker comes in out of Padre Bullpen. And will face Ryan Howard, Carlos Ruiz, and Freddie Galvis. Billy's leading 1 0 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. This is the fourth appearance of the season for Booker. Well, yesterday the bullpen did quite well. We talked about that in our pregame show. Four plus innings. Well, even though he trailed by a run, this is a key inning for Ryan Bookter. Lefty on lefty, we know the numbers. Howard, horrible numbers against left handers. He's got to get him out right here. Erlin got Howard to fly to right and struck him out. So Robbie Erlin goes six innings, one run, only three hits, two walks, seven strikeouts. That's a good day in the big leagues. It is. Good enough to win a game, you would think. Charlie Morton, six and two thirds, no runs, three hits, walked four and struck out seven. That's also a good day in the big leagues. Two and oh to Howard. Cannot afford to walk Ryan Howard, especially with those numbers we talked about versus left handed hitting, left handed pitchers. I pop up. Well, the wind's going to play with that. Ramirez circling, circling, and here comes Upton, but it is Ramirez who makes the play. That gives us a chance to go down to Julie Alexandria. Julie? Hey guys, well this is somewhat of a homecoming for 29 year old Ryan Bookter. He was born in Reading, Pennsylvania, grew up in Blackwood, New Jersey, which is South Jersey just over the border. And he grew up a Phillies fan. He said he's always wanted to pitch here. He didn't get to last season. He had a ton of family here, including his girlfriend and her family. Unfortunately, he didn't make it into the game yesterday. But he said growing up, his favorite player was Chase Utley. A oh, pitcher that admired a hard hitting, switch hitting uh, infielder or left handed hitting. David Hernandez, hard throwing right hander, is getting ready in the Philadelphia bullpen. Here's Ruiz, he's walked and grounded out. Strike one on a 93 mile an hour fastball. Here's Hernandez, Baltimore, Arizona, and now a Philadelphia Philly. And another fastball strike. Here he comes. And Ryan Booker trying to quiet the crowd with his pitching effort. Wastes one there. You feel sorry for the fanatic on a hot, humid summer day in Philadelphia with that outfit, but you might feel pretty good on yeah, that night like pretty this. Pretty toasty. Temperature reaching down into the 40s, and the chill factor uh, much colder than that with this strong breeze blowing in. Just three hits, but the big blow, the triple by Odubel Herrera into the right field corner that knocked in Tyler Goodell. Goodell with his first major league hit, first major league run. And a full count. Spanchenberg is the wind pulling it toward the foul line. Oh! And he dropped it. We knew that's going to happen sooner or later tonight. A very tricky win. And a two base error. Mm. And to Ruiz's credit, he never got yeah. running him and he went full bore all the way to second. Exactly, Dick. On a night like tonight, you got to bust your tail out of the box and 
You know what the weird thing about that is? It looked like Corey had a bead on him, and all of a sudden that ball just, I mean, both hands up in the air anticipating, and then all of a sudden, not even close. Tough break for San Diego. Got some work to do for Ryan Bookter. Freddie Galvis has grounded into a double play and had the first uh, hit of the game for Philadelphia. That didn't come till two outs in the fifth inning off Robbie Irwin. On the outside corner. Bookter picked up uh, when the Atlanta Braves uh, allowed his presence on the waiver wire. Padres like the looks of this uh, hard throwing 29 year old left hander. He's been patient, finally making it to the big leagues. First came into Pro Bowl 2006. Two and one. Throwing in the Padre pen. Infielders getting dirty, diving for a grounder on the infield. Don't let it get through for a base hit to the outfield. And if you're an outfielder and there's a base hit, come up throwing. Ruiz does not have good speed at second base. Three and one. Just missing that low outside. Peter Borges on deck. Right center field, Jay. Oh, died in a hurry, but mm -hmm. off the bat, looked as if that might carry it much farther. So, a line out for the second out. Robbie Erland giving the Padres a quality start tonight. He did a nice job up and down, in and out. The curveball was key. Got some grounders. The infielders working for him on that double play. Going up the ladder to Ryan Howard. He was just in complete control. He had a good feel of all of his pitches and hitting his spots. I really like the changeup tonight from Robbie. He got some calls, but hey, that's going to happen. That's a good night for Robbie Gerland. Only five base runners, a couple of walks, and three hits. But Philadelphia combined a single leading off by Tyler Goodell in the sixth inning and the two out triple for Oduble Herrera for the run. Tell you what, if you hit a line drive to the outfield and you want to hit a home run tonight, right now, you're going to have to go down a couple clubs because that wind is right coming in straight from center field. Or just grounded to second and struck out. Cooled on that one, 0 1 2. You're going to have to hit a good one iron. And that's blown straight in. Not too many people can hit a one on it. Oh, good idea. Good idea. Oh, and two. It looked like a little cutter down and in to Borges. And to hold the Phillies after the two base error by Spangenberg. Running out of time, the Padres. In the eighth inning, they'll open things from the top of the order. John Jay. Heavy dose of stuff inside. I like it. Carlos Ruiz out at second base with two outs. Recipient of 
with two bases on the drop fly ball expansion for 20th pitch of the inning Bookter. And Gorgeous fouls off another count stays at two strikes. Looking over the minor league notes, kid at Fort Wayne, Austin Allen. He was a fourth round pick of the Padres, a catcher a year ago. He started his minor league career 14 for 18. <laughs> Austin Allen. Stay hot. Drafted him out of Florida Tech. Support, there's on the way. See Borges choking up on that bat, anticipating that pitch inside. We got a battle going on here, and uh, there's going to be a little powwow out on the mound there with Derek Norris and Bookter. Remember, every pitch has been inside from the knees to the letters to Peter Borges. Does he try to trick him and throw something soft away? Does he continue to bury it inside? I love battles like this. And Key with a one nothing score on the board, trying to hold that runner Ruiz, get out of the inning, keep it tight. Popped up. Here comes the win. Spangenberg, Kemp, Spangenberg makes the play. <laughs> and that's it for the seventh inning. And no damage done. John Jay has a double and three trips tonight. He'll be leading off for the Padres in the eighth inning. All right, thank you, Mike. He wears his age on his sleeve. Number 30, David Hernandez. First uh, couple of years in the big leagues in Baltimore. The last four seasons with Arizona. Last year with the Napa Max, it was one and five with a 4-2-8 ERA. 40 appearances, all in relief. Hard throwing. Jay, the batter. 94 on the fastball. Been kind of a weird strike zone tonight as Hernandez buries that fastball on the inside part of the play. It looked like a pretty good pitch, but he didn't get the call. Fastball, curveball, changeup from David Hernandez. That one misses. Two and one. 
Jay Spangenberg and Kemp scheduled for the Padres here in the eighth. They've had base runners in only three innings seriously. Foul back, good cut. They had Jay's double with two outs in the third. Couldn't get him home. They had runners at first and third and two outs in the fourth. Ramirez grounded out. They had a single and a couple of walks, but Upton thrown out trying to steal. So then the two out walks. They brought in Neris and he struck out pinch hitter Myers. And a full count. Kevin Quackenbush threw six pitches last night, got the win. Slap foul. Well, we hope you'll be with us tomorrow, four o'clock on. Fox Sports San Diego Padres live the pregame show Colin Ray on the mound for the Padres and Jared Eikhoff I'd say no pre actually four o'clock and we'll be uh, first pitch at 405 no pregame show and ball four a leadoff walk about a third of the time leadoff walks come around to score making it interesting. David Hernandez kind of shaking his head. I don't know whether he's shaking his head on the call or the, maybe the swing. This ball looked like it was. That's off the plate, but does he go? Oh, I thought he went. Well, you always do. Well, he's, the, the bat was way out in front of home plate, you know? I think you're right. So, hey, take advantage of that. Spanchenberg had a rough night, struck out twice, rolled out to first, and committed an error. So we do with all the family and friends here to cheer him on. He takes strike one. 94 on that fastball. A ball and a strike to Spangenberg. Bullpen busy for the Phillies. They've got a couple of men up. Daniel Stump for the second time, and Eno Hosa. We saw him yesterday. Can't catch up to the 93 mile an hour fastball up in the letters. Pulled to first. Howard to second for one. Back to first, not in time. Tough to double up Spangenberg with his speed. So the Padres trade more speed for the out as Jay jogs back to the dugout. Spangenberg can really turn it on and let's see if we can get him to hit home plate. Matt Kemp with Brett Wallace next. Well, you've got a guy who can put the ball out of the ballpark, a guy who can hit the extra base hit the opposite way and, and see that speed from Corey Spangenberg. This is the situation right here. Big at bat for San Diego. Camp has grounded out twice when he's pulled the ball into the shift shortstop throwing him out and singled going the other way. No shift here with a man on first. First pitch slider right here. Hmm. Piled it off. Outfield looks like it's pretty straight up. Center field. Herrera just a, a couple of steps on the third base side of second base. And a little bit to pull in left for Goodell. Taking a long time in that stretch position, trying to get Spangenberg to commit, so call time. Kemp. Popped 
up right side. Howard wants it. Two away. Well, starter Charlie Morton came into the game with a four and one record against the Padres and a 179 batting average against, and he continued in that pattern. He was six and two thirds shutout innings and allowed only three hits. Got some good defensive support from Michael Franco. Punched out seven along the way. He stands to win it. Two outs now here in the eighth inning, and Brett Wallace 0 for 3. Shift on. Ball one. Second baseman Hernandez not out in shallow right field, just on the grass. Plenty of power. He was peppering him. The bleacher seats in batting practice. One mistake, one hanger. Strike call by Hernandez. You know, hitters have various head positions, and as you see, uh, you know, Hosa warming up. And look at how his head almost straight to the pitcher, not out of the right, right eye, but the full two eye look yeah. at the pitcher, Wallace. All five, one and two. Two out, tying run at first base, Spangenberg. Here in the eighth inning. Padres need a run to tie. Time running out. Swing and a miss. And the Padres have struck out again. That's ten punch outs by the Phillies pitching tonight. Padres Baseball brought to you by California Center for Sustainable Energy. It's easy to stay golden at energyupgradeca.org. By Petco, your complete pet store. And by your San Diego County Lexus dealers. Kevin Quackenbush out of the bullpen here in the eighth inning. 
He'll face Goodell, the pitcher spot, and Hernandez with the Phillies hanging on to a one nothing lead. It's been one pitch. That's why it's one nothing down the right field line, scoring a run for Philadelphia. That was back in the sixth inning. Enter Kevin Quackenbush. Got the win yesterday. Nice job by the bullpen. Good split so far in the early season and three and a third innings pitched for Kevin Quackenbush. He got two outs in the sixth inning on six pitches and uh, Padre scored in the top of the seventh. So Quackenbush with one of those uh, quick wins out of the bullpen. Cedric Hunter is going to pinch hit for Goodell. Hunter started last night. <sighs> Former Padre property drafted by the Padres. One and one the count. Has trouble with the breaking ball. That's apparent for Cedric the entertainer Hunter. And we had a sellout on opening day for the Phillies yesterday. An announced crowd of 45,229. These are the real fans, 21,043, braving a cold, windy night on this Tuesday to watch their Phillies out of play. Blanco in the on-deck circle for the Phillies. Swing and a miss strike three. Or did he get a piece? Well, got a piece of that one stays alive. Just did top that one. Shields bantering with Will Myers. Yeah, James Shields uh, playing it smart and wearing the toque. Keeping that coconut warm. Shields will open the upcoming homestand Friday night against Arizona. And will uh, draw Zach Grinke as his opposing pitcher. Tomorrow night it'll be Colin Ray. Colin's choosing the hoodie to keep the uh, cabeza warm. Gene Mark Gomez has worked his way into the closer position for the Phillies. He's warming up in the pen. Padres in the ninth inning looking ahead have Upton, Norris, and Ramirez scheduled. With three right handed batters, and Pete McKinnon's going to get a right hander warm. Trying to close the deal. Hunter, tough at bat, fouls off another. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. I always like this Phillies uniform with the blue stars over mm -hmm. the eyes. Very nice. Two and two. There's Gomez. Bullpen fell apart in Cincinnati. The opening series, all three games won by Cincinnati, and the Phils were ahead in those games. And ball three. Upton, Norris, and Ramirez. Only Upton with a base hit. Padres have only three. Double by Jay. Singles for Kemp and Upton. Yeah, all over the place. Quackenbush. Mm -hmm. Pitch number 10. And he walked it. And time for our Bill Howe play of the game. It is the one swing of the bat by Oduble Herrera that produced an RBI. A triple for Herrera. That scored Tyler Goodell with single to start the inning, and that's the run that gets bigger and bigger as we progress here toward the ninth inning. And Pete McCannon is 
changed his mind and pulled back Gomez. It'll be Emmanuel Burris. Burris will hit. Speedy switch hitter. Padres looking for the sacrifice. Pinch hit yesterday, struck out. Hey, remember, they can't show bunt, pull back, and slap that ball. Boy, Alexi Amarista at third base. Look at how close he is. That's. Better have a good dental plan. Yeah. Yes, he did. Oh, I thought he jabbed at it and didn't get his bat back in time. 2 0. Oh. That's a strike. He went for it. Did he not? Yeah, he, he oh, he definitely going, jabbed he, at well, that. that. Then he pulled it. That's back. an offer. Well, Hernandez saw uh, it. Of course no he offer. didn't. <laughs> and Balsley out to talk with Quackenbush and try to coax a strike out of him after the leadoff walk, and he falls behind Burris 2-0. Oh. Okay, in this situation, we mentioned it many times. Get and out. Don't try to try to get too cute, too perfect on a throw. Sure, you want to get that lead runner, but if you can't, and he puts it down, get that out at first base. And now that the counts 2 0, lets him swing. No, nope, still up there to square and another ball. 3 0. Not good. A leadoff walk. Yeah. That was well earned by Hunter. 10 pitch at bat. Now three misses from Quackenbush. It looks like Darren Balsley quickly going to the phone in that pottery dugout. Let's see some action in the pottery pen. And it looks like it's going to happen. Boy, that was him close to throwing this throw. Back to back walks. And no one out, top of the order. Cesar Hernandez. Left hand. He pitched a third of an inning last night. The left hander is first to get up. Yet Hernandez, a switch hitter. And then the left handed hitting Herrera. Well, this cold weather, you've been sitting around for a while. It's going to take a, a while, possibly, for Brad Hand, and there's already been a visit to the mound. So, rapid fire in that Padre bullpen. Fernandez has grounded out twice and struck out. Those three at bats against Robbie Erland. Come on now. Another one out of the strike zone. That's six in a row. Padres had the wheel play on with Ramirez charging over to third to cover and Amarisa. They do it again and it's punted in the air right to Amarisa the throw to first. Not in time. So one out. And here's Odubel Herrera. He's the star for the Phillies tonight with a RBI triple. You know this ball was bunted in the air. And Alexi caught it through the first base. I thought he was going to airmail it to first. As soon as that ball left his hand, under it just a little bit, but not the case there. Spangenberg. Big play. Covering it first. Going over a little scouting report. Hey, Quack, how do you want to go after this guy? Remember, he's got in the back of his head the hit. But he got down the right field line for that triple. I believe it was a breaking ball or a change up, something off speed that he got out in front of. Well, that was just buying some time yep. to go out to the mound to allow Hand to throw a couple more tosses in the pen because here comes Andy Green. He'll make a pitching change and the southpaw beckoned from the bullpen with two on, one out, eighth inning, and the Phillies a one nothing lead.
The Phils lead the pods at one to nothing. And while we have a moment, stay tuned after the game as the crew breaks down the ball game and talks with the players and coaches on Padres Live. Coming up next on Fox Sports San Diego, brought to you by Cox. They do such a great job, so stay tuned. We'll have some highlights from around baseball, I'm sure. The Arizona Diamondbacks beat the Dodgers tonight, so the Dodgers are now four and four on the season. Diamondbacks move to three and five. Baltimore, the only big league team without a loss so far this season. They're in Boston, and they're in the lead in the late innings as Brad Hand takes over. Picked up uh, after the season open from Miami. He was the top pick of the Marlins, second round pick back in 2008. Working out of the bullpen. Left hander against left hander. And remember, it was lefty against lefty when Robbie Erlin was out there. That triple off speed pitch. It'll be interesting to see how Brad Hand pitches to Herrera here in this situation. He struck out, walked, and the RBI triple. How big is that now? One nothing mm. Phillies. Let's see if he keeps the hard stuff away. He's looking for a ground ball chance, double play. First fastball outside. Hutter and Burris aboard on walks. Pretty good pitch, didn't get the call. Ground ball pull foul. And happy birthday today to David Letterman. We miss you. He's 69 today. Good baseball fan. See where that Detroit Tiger fan yesterday in one game got four foul balls. Four. Really? During a game. That's sitting in the right spot. It <laughs> sure is. They could bounce into him. A 1 1 pitch coming up. Brad Hand. Dougal Herrera over the top of the helmet. Well, that was an off speed pitch. The fans are yeah. going because it, you know, it's a bad direction, but no intent there. You know, I'm more amazed that Derek Norris came up and caught this ball. I mean, that's coming out of the crouch, having to reach up across your body over the head. And you see how Herrera got rid of the bat so it doesn't hit the bat, you know, foul ball, or maybe that ball in play if the ball, if the bat is still in your hand. And get rid of that bat when it's above your head. So two and one to Herrera. Under out at second, Burris at first. Good speed. Both men. That 90 mile an hour fastball right through his swing. Yeah, that's just a good old fashioned fastball, and that's just a good old fashioned couple of hot dog hats. <laughs> They're going to be the highlight of the dance right after the game. <laughs> that hot dog, you better eat it fast tonight. It gets yeah. to be a cold dog. Mm -hmm. Don't like cold dogs. No. How about a hot pitch right here from Brad Hand for a strikeout or a grounder for a double play? There you go. Padres have turned a couple tonight. Well, checking the scoreboard, Washington leads Atlanta 2 0 late. Braves have to win a game. They're 0 6, first time in almost 30 years starting that poorly. 3 and 2 now. As I mentioned earlier in the game, with the wind and the cold temperatures, it's tough to get a grip on the baseball. You see Brad Hand consistent going to his mouth to create some moisture so you get a good grip on that baseball. Runners take their lead, three and two with one out.
Laps at the left field. That's a tough play. It's slicing away from Upton. Foul. So with the wind blowing in, with any kind of spin at all on the ball yeah. off the bat, it's going to just exaggerate the flight of the ball to the foul lines. Runners return. In the Dodgers losing to Arizona and the Giants are at Colorado. They're tied at one there in the fourth. Here's the repeat 3 2 pitch. Swung at ball four. And that last foul ball. And a newcomer having trouble uh, getting on the same page with catcher Norris on the sign. Now he's ready. And at ball four, and it skips away. And Amarisa is going to hustle over to field the ball by the Padre dugout. Make sure that the runners don't come all the way around. So here in the eighth inning, the Phillies have the bases loaded all on bases on balls. Kevin Quackenbush having trouble throwing strikes. It seems that Brad Hand doing the same and good hustle by Alexei on that ball four. Tell you what, got some work to do here. Force it any base. Work for a ground or something down in the zone. Michael Franco has not hurt the Padres tonight, but he's hitting 400 coming in. He's fouled out, hit into a double play and struck out. See Andy Green going. Two on the infield, the setting for the infield. They play halfway up the middle. And another ball in the dirt. Hey, Derek Norris doing a fine job of blocking these baseballs, and this one particularly mm -hmm. just in back of home plate takes it right off the chest protector. Anytime a ball in the dirt gets away, pitcher, what are you doing? You're busting your tail towards home plate. Better that you're there and not needed than the other way around. Ball hit to the corners, third and first. They'll come to the plate up the middle. They might try to turn two at second. Another pitch out of the zone. Darren Ballsley out to talk to hand. Home plate seems to be moving around this inning for the Padre pitchers. It isn't quite that strong, but surely is jumping. Tough to throw a strike. Young Franco did a grand slam last year late against the Dodgers. Luis Perdomo, right hander, warming up. Hard to defend that base on bowl. Yes, it is. Boy, Franco in the Driver's seat here with the bases loaded. He can kind of guess fastball and take a rip. And he does. Misses. Violent swing. Well, that's the kind of hack you want to take. 2 0, if, especially if you get a fastball. Back toward us, so that levels the count at two and two. One run, three hits for the Phillies. No runs, three hits for the Padres. One error each team. Eighth inning bases loaded. One out and two and two to Franco. Ground ball to short. There's one. Back to first. A double play. No, it's out of the glove of Wallace. Two runs will score. And it's three to nothing. A perfect double play ball. Spangenberg's throw was wide inside the bag. Wallace trying to make the slap tag and drop the ball. 
So without the aid of a base hit, the Phillies have two runs and the inning continues. Well, Spangenberg's had a rough night. Perfect feed from Alexei up the line, and Brett Wallace did everything he could. Second error for Spangenberg. Way off the line. Yeah. That was a sure double play. Brett Wallace never really had control of that baseball. And Umpires going over towards the Padres dugout. Andy uh, Green, Mark McGuire on the phone. Maybe they're checking the slide, maybe? Once again, maybe in the future, the Major League Baseball will consider having one of the umpires, mm -hmm. the umpire in chief, wear a microphone so they can announce why this play has been challenged. All right, there's. Well, he didn't go to the bag. He, he didn't he, touch the bag. Yep. Yeah, this could very well become a double play and no run score. Right now, it's a fielder's choice error, Spangenberg. But the slide was not directly to the base. That's, that's for right. certain. Yeah. And under the new. Interpretation of the rules. This is a double play. You have to go towards the bag, commit to the bag. He wasn't even close. He had no intent to going to the bag. Even though there wasn't any serious contact mm -hmm. with a second baseman or the shortstop is covering, that's not the intent of the rules. And that's uh, it's been a little messy this first week. But they've already called this a couple of times in major league action. Well, here it is again. Now the only way it might go the other way is that there was no intent to intent to get Spangenberg right. way over to the other side. They could just say he's just trying to get out of the way of the throw. Got to be able to touch the bag, and that was not the case there on that slide. A second, here we go. Well, they're not going to uh, interpret it that way. It's so subjective, isn't it? It really is. That's a good challenge by Andy sure. Green. So fielder's choice Franco gets one RBI. The other one scores on the air by Spangenberg. Boy, a messy inning. Three walks and an error. And it's 3 0 Philadelphia. And here's Ryan Howard, 0 for 3 tonight. Well, you keep setting the table with walks and uh, you're flirting with a disastrous inning and so it has become. And this cold night three looks like 300 and Howard now pulls one into the corner. Right, round second to third and holding is Franco on a long single by Howard. Ryan Howard's not going to waste any time. Middle in. That's probably the only pitch that Ryan Howard could do some damage with. That's right in his swing path. Breaking balls down and away. Fastballs up out of the zone. He'll chase, but that one. Elevated and up in. Good for a single to right. Ruiz has walked, grounded out, and safe on Spangenberg's drop fly ball. First and third, two out. So both runs charged to Quackenbush, who walked the first two men to open the inning, and they've come around to score. High fly ball that's going to sail toward the crowd. The wind's got it. Kemp can't get there, oh. can he? Oh, oh, what an effort! He had the ball for a while, sliding into the barrier there. Boy, that's a terrific effort by Kemp. Matt Kemp, nicely done. That is a long run. Flash look, track, break it down, and he tried to get. Oh, 
Try to make the basket <laughs> catch while sliding into the barrier. And this ball never hits the ground because it's off his body and then out of his glove and he tries down the second effort. Yeah, that's the old college hustle there. He had that in his glove it looked yeah, like because he did. cradled it. Good effort. Great effort. A one and one to Ruiz. Another chance. Here comes Kemp. Wins got it, blowing it toward the line. And the inning comes to an end. Two runs on one hit, two left. Time now for our Carl's Jr. star of the game. Charlie Morton continued his terrific pitching against San Diego. Four and one coming in. He goes six and two thirds. Shut out innings. Allowed only three hits. He walked four and struck out seven. And stands to win his first game of the new season. If Gene Mar Gomez can hold the Padres here in the ninth. Burris moves to second base. Or first base, rather, for Howard. And Jenmar Gomez, the closer, as Mr. Enberg indicated, three pitch pitcher, fastball changeup, and a slider. You know, he's going to touch about 94, but he's not that overpowering, averaging about 91. So, he's got some work to do here to get multiple base runners. And there's, uh, as Dick mentioned, Emmanuel Burris patrols first base for Ryan Howard. Gomez with only one career major league save. Cleveland three years, Pittsburgh two, and Phillies the last year. More a middle reliever, but the Phillies are shy of that dominating mm -hmm. relief pitcher to close, and Gomez has inherited the role. He'll face Upton, Norris, and Ramirez unless Andy Green goes to his bench. Hunter now in left field as well. For Goodell. Upton has walked and singled and lined to short. So, with only one career save prior to this year, and he's got a couple uh, over the weekend in New York against the Mets. Settling into that role quite nicely, huh? Hopefully, the Potters can spoil it here. Swinging bunt. The that's not be able to make the play on up and it's touched in fair territory by Franco so an infield hit to get things started up and on base for the third straight time as I mentioned multiple base runners hey a home run sure that would be nice but get on board next guy comes up it's touched by Franco it goes foul but touched in fair territory that's a hot potato Runner aboard for San Diego. They weren't going to throw out Upton anyway. He should have just let that one go, don't you yeah, think, Dick? Maybe it might have. Yeah. Been a tough to grab. He's going to be on first ball. anyway. Yeah. Male instincts take over. 
after keeping score both of the runs scored even though there was an error involved are earned. Brian Howard single made those both earned runs. So they're both charged to Quackenbush. Now trying to keep it going. Derek Norris. He's walked. Safe on an error and struck out. Got to get the shillelaghs out this mm. inning. Tougher challenge. Thanks to the generosity of the, the Padre Wildness with the three walks in the last of the eighth and two of them have scored. In there, 0 and 2. 92 on the fastball. Twenty eight year old from Venezuela Gomez. Came up to the big leagues with the Indians back in 2010 as a starter. And continued in that role the following year with a tribe. Went to the pen two years ago in Pittsburgh. Everything's down, down and away from Gomez. That's exactly where you want to be in a situation like this. Induce a ground ball, possible double play. Help yourself out. Alexei Ramirez is next. And then Amarista here in the top of the ninth. Padres trying to battle back. Down 3 0. Inside, clearly inside as we check Fox tracks. Slider down on the way here after going hard inside. Fastball away. Misses again. Dan's trying to help out Angel Hernandez, but those pitches are off the plate. Mm -hmm. 21,043 chilled customers here at Citizens Bank Park. Oh, full count. Up the middle and knocked down by Gomez. Throws to second, back to first, not in time for the double play. As Gomez took one for the team on that one, threw his body into that comebacker. Going out to check on the well being of the right hander. Fired a nice strike to second base as well after knocking that one down. What are the instincts of the human being? I mean, that ball is in a split second on you, and it's blistered by Derek Norris and still able to get it looked like he got a piece of the glove on it. Alexei Ramirez trying to get on there. The man that can concern the Phillies is on deck. Tying the run. And at the moment, it's Amarista. The only left handed batter on the bench for the Padres is Travis Jankowski. Ground ball softly to first. They'll get the out easily. Burris making the play, and the Padres are down to their final out. Four o'clock tomorrow. I we invite you to be with us as Colin Ray goes for his first win of the new season against uh, Gerard Eikhoff of the Phillies. Eikhoff, one of the many acquisitions picked up by Philadelphia in their trades of last year. He uh, was involved in the trade for Cole Hamels with Texas.
And Marista with the runner at second. Two outs, ninth inning. He's lined out, grounded out, and walked tonight. Strike one. Well, the Padres, should they not score here, will lose. Will lose their fifth game of the season, four by shutout. But Ann Marista can change that dimension right here with a base hit. Bring up a pinch hitter. Jabari Blash has a bat in the on deck circle. Meaningless run on second. Padres need another base runner. And that won't do it. Second baseman to first, and the ball game is over. Padres whitewashed again. The final score Philadelphia three, San Diego nothing. And to San Diego we go. Mike Pomerantz.